I'd like to start the presentation by going over a few global perspectives on newborn hearing screening. Much of the data I'm going to present has been taken from this study produced by Newman et al, which is a survey on the global status of newborn and infant hearing screening. It was compiled and published in 2020. The study states that there's 34 million children suffering from hearing loss worldwide according to World Health Organization estimates. These are children between the ages of 0 and 15. If we focus on the age ranges between 0 and 5, there are 7.5 million children suffering with hearing loss. The study notes that the bulk of these children can be found in the regions of South Asia, Asia Pacific and Sub-Saharan Africa. With growing populations, we are also seeing that this number is increasing year on year. This lays the foundations for the importance of identifying hearing loss at an early age. The Joint Committee on Infant Hearing has produced recommendations in the years 2007 and 2019. The most up-to-date recommendations state that newborn hearing screening is effective at reducing the consequences of permanent hearing loss. That screening should occur before one month of age. Audiological diagnosis following screening should then be made by three months of age and that audiological treatment should be made by six months of age. If we're successful in this screening journey, then this has many benefits for the child. For instance, this can lead to improved language skills as demonstrated by Ching, Newman and Yosha Inaga Intano, as well as reading, cognitive and improved academic performance. When we weigh up the situation, the World Health Organization states that the benefits of hearing screening outweigh the cost and potential negative consequences associated with the methods. Therefore, further reinforcing the positive impact that newborn hearing screening can bring. If you're currently watching this in a country which isn't performing newborn hearing screening, then I recommend that you uh, download this white paper titled Hearing Care Across the Lifespan, written by the Oticon Foundation. It provides a nice overview of how screening is performed and the benefits of performing newborn screening, not just from the diagnostic stage, but moving into aided amplification as well as cochlear implantation. So what is the current global status with respect to newborn hearing screening? This map of the globe shows countries which have access to hearing screening. Each country is colour coded. We can see that the dark green countries represent countries where screening is achieved in 85% to 100% of newborns. As we reduce, we can see that the lighter green colour represents countries which show 50 to 84%. The amber colour represents 10 to 49%. The orange countries represent 1 to 9%, the red countries 0 to 1%, and in the grey countries we can see that from this study they were not able to acquire any data. This access is based on the three accepted screening methods. This can be either autoacoustic emissions only, automated ABR only, or a combination of automated ABR and OAE. What we can see from Newman's study is that 38% of the global population have little or no access to newborn hearing screening, whereas 33% of the global population are currently receiving very large access to newborn hearing screening, with most of the newborns having a newborn hearing screen. When we look at the difference between these countries of the who has access then we can see that the nominal GDP per capita has a huge influence on whether children have access to newborn hearing screening. We can see that richer countries have higher rates and poorer countries with little or no access. This graph now shows which methods are employed around the world. We can see that in Europe we primarily see an preference for autoacoustic emission screening, whereas if we look to the Americas and Australia, we see this either shifting towards an automated ABR 
or a combined two-step approach using automated ABR and autoacoustic emissions. We will look at the consequences of choosing these methods in a subsequent video. Let's now have a look at the age at which children are diagnosed with their hearing loss, as well as the age at which they're fitted with amplification. If we look at the global figures, then we can see that children are diagnosed with their hearing loss at 4.6 months if newborn hearing screening has been completed. If newborn hearing screening hasn't been completed, then this increases to 34.9 months. When we then look at the age at which amplification is fitted, in children which were screened, this is 6.7 months, and in children which did not have a screen, then we can see that amplification is provided at 35.2 months. This is a significant difference in a time where speech and language skills are being developed and access to good hearing is essential. We can then look at individual country data in a little bit more detail. In the US, we can see that children which are screened have their hearing loss diagnosed at 4.2 months, whereas children that do not have their hearing screened are diagnosed on average at 17.5 months. In Germany, this is a little bit different. Children which have access to newborn hearing screening are then diagnosed a little bit quicker than in the US at 3.1 months. We can see that there's a significant delay in comparison to the US for those children which do not have newborn hearing screening. We can see that these children are diagnosed at 39 months. So even between two rich countries, performance of newborn hearing screening and diagnosis of hearing loss can differ. The important thing to note with newborn hearing screening is that although implementing newborn hearing screening programs is excellent, we need to be aware of the limitations. One of the limitations in newborn hearing screening is the children that get lost in the system. What we can see from newborn hearing screening data from around the world is that 4.5% will result in a refer on the newborn hearing screen test result. This means that the child will need to be seen a second time. Unfortunately, we see that 17.2% of these children are lost to follow-up, meaning that they do not get their second screen. If we look at this in a little bit more detail, then we can see differences between countries which have large access to newborn hearing screening and countries which have little or no access to newborn hearing screening. We can see that those that have access to newborn hearing screening have much lower loss to follow-up rates of around 13%, whereas those with little or no access have higher rates at around 27%. To note, of the 27 countries which reported loss to follow-up data in the Newman study, then 48% of these countries had a loss to follow-up rate of greater than 30%. This is significant because the Joint Committee on Infant Hearing suggests that the maximum loss to follow-up rate should be 30% in any given country. This tells us that too many children are being lost in the system and therefore we need to think of ways on how we can capture these children and ensure that hearing screening is completed.